Hello, uh, today I'm going to be doing a overview and sort of a first impressions video on a firearm I picked up off of AtlanticFirearms.com. This is their so-called Romanian AIM-74 Battlefield Pickup, or BFPU for short. Uh, giving you some of the purchase information first, I guess. Uh, I bought this gun for $825 off of their website. This, uh, this gun comes in th three different variations, actually. Uh, this one, the BFPU version, which is no longer 825, actually. I should mention that. It's actually uh, 869 now. They did raise the price on it. There is a non-BFPU version that is 950. It's, ba it's the same gun, it just, uh, they basically actually refinish and restore the parts kits and put them together instead of just leaving them as they get them, like this one. There is also a fixed stock version that's 929. It's also refinished and restored as well, but it has a fixed... Uh, wooden stock instead of a side folder. So uh, I bought the uh, the BFPU obviously for eight twenty five. Um, it also came with a uh, an original American made pistol grip. This is an American new one made of plastic or some sort of polymer maybe. Pretty cheap. It's pretty glossy and shiny. Um, they throw in, if you want it, this. This is actually an original surplus Bakelite pistol grip. It's actually a true surplus Romanian one. It's free. I don't see why you, you know, why not? You might as well get it. It's, I, I think it's an improvement. Uh, there's also a shooter's package they offer for an additional $189. Uh, it's a shooter's package. It comes with two surplus, two more additional magazines. Just like this one. This is actually one of them. The original mag it came with. I don't have in it right now. I'll show you it later. Uh, it comes with a sling. A magazine pouch. A blank firing adapter actually. Uh, a bayonet. Scabbard and frog. And uh, a tool and cleaning kit. I believe that's it. Uh, I didn't need any of that stuff. Other than like the magazines. And uh, I guess, I, I don't have a blank firing adapter, I guess. But I don't really care about that. So I just bought two additional surplus magazines for $40 each. They have them for $40. Bucks. Um, that's the real catch with this gun. The original magazines are kind of expensive. This, this, the Romanians never actually used standard Soviet Bakelite 545 mags with this gun. Um, they basically just did these steel ones, and these can be a bit pricey. I've seen them actually as much as $70 before, so that's not great, but, you know, I thought I'd get them for a, you know, 40 bucks is on the lower end from what I've seen, so. Uh, I threw on an original Soviet, uh, or Russian surplus AK-74 sling, um, I had lying around, so. Uh, it also came with a, uh, you know, Atlantic Firearms generic general AK manual. Uh, it also came with, let me pull it out here, it came with a case. This sort of, uh, you know, duffel bag. It's not hard or anything, it's soft. Now, let me open it up. There's the inside. It's got a uh, magazine pouch. So you can put like three AK mags on this side. There's not one on the other side though. And it's got a nice logo with an AK. It's a nice, you know, it's better than nothing I suppose. I, I store guns in it. So that's uh, about it uh, as far as the packaging and purchase information goes. I will show the magazines I guess now. So this is the other one that I ordered extra. And this is the one it actually came with. Pretty rough worn. And it's also, uh, let me flip it over actually. The, uh, the floor plate is pretty severely bent. Uh, doesn't affect function 
as far as I can tell. I have not shot this gun yet, but uh, doing some ejection, just, you know, racking the bolt with that magazine, it doesn't seem to affect the function of the gun at all, so whatever. It, uh, I just like, you know, the look of this one a little bit more, I guess. Um, so now getting into the, I guess, the background and what the gun is and its history. Uh, the AIM-74 name is a civilian export name for the gun. Uh, it is not its proper military name. The actual proper name is the PAMD-1986, the Puska Automata model of 1986. Puska Automata meaning uh, automatic rifle in Romanian, I guess. Um, so it was adopted in 1986. It replaced the PMMD 63 and 65. These were basically standard Romanian copies of the AKM and AKMS. Um, there is also another version of this gun that was adopted in 94 called the PAMD 94. It's the same gun, but it's got a shorter barrel. This is a standard Soviet length 17 inch barrel. That one is a 12 inch barrel, um, the, the 94. Uh, so it's basically the Romanian version of a crink, um, essentially. So, so this gun is a 5.45 AK, but it's really not a technical or true 74 or, um, not really. It's really more on the side of just being an AKM chambered in 545. Uh, the main thing or reason why is the gas block. It does not incorporate the 90 degree gas block of the 74. It retains the 45 of the AKM. So there is that. Uh, I'll do some comparisons. Let's, let's kind of compare and contrast what makes this gun a little different than a standard Soviet 74, starting at the muzzle. Same muzzle brake, but it's a little different dimensionally. This is thinner and longer than a standard Soviet one. Um, so, gas block, uh, again, like I already mentioned, is a, you know, a standard AKM one, basically. You got your bayonet lugs. The rear sight, or I mean <laughs> front sight block is different. I'll just show you the sight picture. Line it up there. Might see a, maybe a little bit of a difference. Yeah, the uh, the uh, the protectors, the two little ears, the protectors are longer than a normal AK. I mean, they're about a uh, it's like a centimeter longer. So your your sight picture is a little different. They stick way up above the rear sight when you're aiming the gun. So, uh, moving further back, uh, the furniture, obviously what makes Romanian AKs so distinct is the, uh, the lower handguard featuring what is referred to as the wooden dong, the, uh, donkey dong, the wooden dong, the donkey dick, some sort of variation of that, uh, lower handguard. Vertical handguard, they'll come in two different varieties, they'll either come in this one that's sort of canted forward, or they'll come canted kind of straight down or even slightly back. Uh, this variety was featured on this gun. The 63, the PMMD 63, the full stock AKM, was also forward. While the AKMS, the 65, was actually sort of straight down or backward. So, uh, And then we have a Bakelite upper handguard with the gas tube. Uh, just like the Soviets, the Soviets featured uh, the same. They originally were all wood, but then they did switch over to a Bakelite upper as well later. So by the time this was adopted, they had they had, had the Bakelite upper already. Uh, rear sight block, the same. Receiver, bolt carrier, bolt group, recoil spring is all the same. Uh, the selector is the same. It's got a, a dimpled receiver. Trigger guard and everything's the same. Already covered the magazines. They're obviously different. Pistol grip is a Bakelite pistol grip. Nothing really different there. Dust cover's the same. The Getting to the trigger, the trigger is not a Tapco, interestingly enough. Uh, I'm not sure what it is exactly. It doesn't really say 
a on Atlantic Firearms site. So it's either going to be maybe a Rack 1. I've never seen a Rack 1 in person before. I've never handled a, an AK with a Rack 1 trigger group. So I couldn't tell you. It could be a Rack 1. Century is, is putting that one in a lot of their AKs now. So that's uh, quickly becoming the actually most popular trigger group in America now for an AK over the TAPCO. Or it's, uh, it's actually a surplus Romanian trigger group. I'm not sure. So... Um, I don't know, uh, but yeah, the barrel and receiver are Romanian, or I'm sorry, American. You got an American, new American barrel, a Morrissey receiver. I can actually, they put the mark down here. Don't know how good the lighting is there, but it is a Morrissey receiver. Not the greatest receiver in America, you know, generally I think Childers... Uh, and like a Nodak Sputter, probably superior. But Morrissey's probably the third best in the uh, the non, you know, boutique range. I'm not complaining, really. The barrel is not chrome-lined. It is chrome mollied. Is that super amazing? No. We do have this fascination in the AK community for having chrome-lined barrels. It's great, but is it super required? No. Do I Do I plan on fighting a war or a campaign with this gun? Do I plan on fighting in the desert or jungle? Uh, no. Am I going to probably ever shoot corrosive ammo through this gun? That basically doesn't exist here anymore, so no. It's nice to have, but it's not required for me. So, uh, other feature is the side rail. Side rail is also not original. It is an American-made side rail. These things did have side rails, though. So, uh, it's just not, you know, it's not an original Romanian side rail, but that's not really that big of a deal. Um, then also the actual charging handle is different. Let me pull it up. You can immediately notice it is slanted up. Yes, it is a, uh, at about a 45 degree angle there. Yeah, it's a, uh, upward slanted charging handle. And it's also a little bit longer than normal too. Uh, this is, uh, in theory, supposed to help help you uh, rack the the, uh, the handle a little easier. It does help, actually, I've noticed. It does noticeably help. Um, let me actually flip it over. <clears throat> There's this good old side rail. Wood is a little bit more worn on this side. But, and we've got the serial and the date. Focus in there. 1990. This is a 1990 parts kit. Um, that seems to be the norm. Uh, pretty much all of these parts kits that have come into the country are going to be either uh, 90 or 91. So that seems to be pretty uh, uh, typical. Um, so then let's get to the, the big keynote feature that's really noticeable as well as the stock. Obviously, yeah, this is a uh, crutch folder. Features one of the, uh, what we call crutch folders. The crutch folder uh, was actually originally uh, debuted, I guess you would say, by the East Germans and the Egyptians back in the early 60s on their AKMs, actually. Uh, the Egyptian one's a little different. Uh, this is a East German style. The Egyptian ones are a little different. Uh, so Romania adopted them on their 74s, and so did Poland. Poland adopted them on their 74s, the WZ-88 Tantal, which is like this gun, and it's also not a real true 74 either. It's basically the same concept. It's really just an AKM with a 545 barrel as well. But, uh, to unlock it, there is a button right there. It's got a little bit of knurling, and you just push it in and pop it out. Uh, so that's how you do that. The action is pretty smooth. This is actually the smoothest action of any AK I've felt or, or used or handled. So let me uh, actually sit you down here. And I'll open this up. Don't know if I'm really in camera, but you just pop it. Got to kind of be careful. This thing likes to swing and it can pinch your thumb pretty bad. 
It does not snap in place, it just kind of goes into place. Action. Pretty smooth. Won't lie. Hey. Pretty smooth action. Uh, trigger pull. Pretty good. It's better than Tapco. Whatever this trigger is. It is better than Tapco. I gotta say. So that's actually nice. Um, it is better than Tapco. So then once we pop the stock out, yeah, things get a little lengthy. Your average 74 is going to be a little longer than a standard AKM or, or 47. So it is, uh, the barrel's an inch longer. You've got a longer muzzle brake. So, yeah, there it is in its full glory. Uh, let me flip it around. Get the sling out of the way. Pretty nice. I like the way it looks quite a bit. Now, getting to my experiences, actually with this sp specific specimen here. Um, I like it overall, but there are some quirks. I don't know if this is just specific to my gun or I got a little unlucky or this is just how they are sometimes. Uh, but the receiver is very, very tight. There is no mag wobble at all. It, it doesn't even move a millimeter in that sucker. Uh, because of this, the mags really like to stick in the gun. <laughs> And they can kind of fight you getting in and out. Um, the mag release and catch is fine. It's just that damn receiver, the well, the mag well is just super tight. They could have probably filed another millimeter all the way around or, or, or two, honestly. So mag changes are a little difficult. They're not impossible or anything, but they're a little diff more difficult than normal. You got to kind of put some force into it in and out. Uh, it's not going to make mag changes the smoothest thing in the world. You're not going to be able to, you know, Spetsnaz reload it or anything. But the other thing was the dust cover. Uh, initially, I had kind of trouble getting it off because this spring knob on the back of the recoil spring is oversized. It is, a, you know, a little bit too big for the hole in the dust cover. And I think this... It's actually a little bit different than any AK. Uh, none of my AKMs or RPK have a, a knob quite like that. So I don't know if this is specific to this gun or I just... I don't know. But I have to basically push in on it and then push down on the dust cover as well. And it'll kind of pop out. Uh, it took me a while to actually figure that out because I was sitting here struggling with the thing. But I finally figured that out. Uh, because I had taken the pistol grip off to put the new one, that one on. And uh, obviously obviously the lug bolt inside popped around and it was you know wobbling around in the receiver. So I had to you know get everything out to put it back in place. So that was a pain. Um... But now that I got that all settled, it's fine. The mag changes, I'm just going to have to, you know, kind of live with. But uh, that's about it. Uh, overall, I'm pretty impressed. I love the way it looks. Action is smooth. Trigger pull's great. Uh, there's no cant of any kind. The sights and the gas block and everything is super straight. Uh, it was also very, 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 very dirty when I got it. It was covered in grease and grime and grit. On the, on the outside, actually. And I had to clean all that up. I left all of the uh, the kind of the grease inside the gun, though. But that's another thing. Um, uh, that's about it. You know, uh, it, it functions fine with just me ejecting rounds out of the mag. It functions fine, I'm imagining. Uh, it, because that mag, you know, fits in there so tight... I'm not going to have any worry about, you know, the bolt going over the cartridge if, uh, you know, when there's too much back and forth, you know, the mag kind of drops down a little bit. So that's not going to be a problem. I think this gun will reliably function flawlessly for probably its entire life cycle. Um, overall, I, I'd probably recommend it, I think. I'm, I've been impressed. So, uh, but keep a note, again, the price did go up. It's now 869 so, 
Overall, I like it. This is uh, the third BFPU gun I've got. Uh, I've got two others, and uh, there's actually a fourth one out there that they have, but it's not in stock right now. It's not been in stock for a while, but once they get it, I'll probably do it too. I'm going to do a review. I will do a review on the other two uh, probably pretty soon as well. So uh, that's going to be about all. Uh, overall, again, I'd recommend it. If you're looking to scratch a, uh, you know, 545 itch. 545 is, uh, there's been a little bit of panic about 545. About how, uh, you know, the ammo might be going away. Uh, we're not going to be getting any more 545 guns anymore. That might be true. You know, we're not getting Saigas anymore. Vepers are going away. The only 545s we are going to get now, reliably, are going to be parts kits. And those aren't going to last forever. So, and these are really the only parts kit 545 guns we really get reliably anymore. The Tauntals have kind of dried up. We don't, they're, they're few and far between now when they come in. We still do get occasionally just standard Bulgarian 74s occasionally. Um, Atlantic actually had them in not too long ago as well. Uh, there's still Arsenal. Arsenal still makes brand new 545s occasionally, but I think they might actually stop making those soon. Uh, they're going to focus mainly, I think, just on making maybe the 556 five, ones now. So that's unfortunate. I don't know if that's going to happen, but that's what I've heard. So I would recommend if you really want to get an older school 545 like this or a Tantal or a standard 74 Bulgarian one, now's probably the time to get on it. These are not going to last forever and they're only going to get more expensive. So I'd recommend it. 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10. So that's going to be about all. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.